Welcome to Handmade Happenings. I'm Marissa, and today I'm back with another sewing vlog. Now, a few weeks ago, I posted a video sharing the sort of journey I went on as I tried to draft a bodice pattern. Now, at the end of that video, I had what I thought was a good fitting bodice. And I had made a mock-up, I was happy with the fit, and then I made a dress out of it. Not in that video, but immediately after. And then I discovered a bunch of fit issues that I missed. I think because I didn't have a zipper in my mock-up. So I took my dress to my grandmother to see what she thought. I basically, I told her what was happening when I wore it, and then I held it up in front of me. And just by those two things, she was able to identify exactly what the problem was on. So the first was that there was not enough width across the back. It was too tight there. And then the second was that the width of the shoulder seam was also too narrow so that the shoulder seam should have ended like right at the edge of my shoulder. And it did not. So after getting that advice from her, I went home and I spent a couple of very frustrating days trying to get this correct, make those adjustments. So I made the adjustments. I tried another mock-up, this time with a zipper, and I even kind of wore the mock-up while working on another project just to see if it felt right while doing daily tasks. And after that, I was as confident with the pattern as I could be without making another full-on dress. So before I even drafted this pattern, I had three dresses, I believe, in mind that I was going to make once I had a decent starting place with a pattern. So I pulled out the second fabric that I had, which is this red and black cross-woven cotton shirting. I bought this bundle of fabric at farmhousefabrics.com. It's a two yard, it was a two yard bundle. And the plan that I had for this was a very basic bodice top. So just the regular bodice with short sleeves and a high-low skirt with a ruffle around the hem. And I had planned a flounce right at the knee which was inspired by this skirt from the blog Melly Sews. Now, despite all of my rambling about the bodice pattern at the beginning of this video, there is not a lot to say about the actual bodice of this dress, and that may be a good thing because it probably just means that it went right. Uh, it was a basic dress with darts, so the assembly was pretty straightforward. So the darts, so the shoulder seams, the side seams, then add bias tape to the neckline and insert the sleeves. The most notable thing about this dress was probably that one of the side seams was only sewn down one inch, and that was because it had a zipper added to that seam. So it had to be left open for the zipper. And it was only sewn an inch because I actually needed the rest of that. I needed to insert the sleeves. Otherwise, I would have left that side completely unsewn. However, the skirt was a little more complicated. So I chose a high-low style for this particular fabric. And I didn't really want it that long. So the first thing I did was just take a measurement from my waist to the highest point of the skirt, which was right above my knee. And then a second measurement from my waist to just below my knee, which is where I wanted the lowest part to be. There wasn't a lot of difference between the two, so I just cut the entire skirt to the height of the back of it. And this fabric was 60 inches wide, so the skirt was actually 60 inches wide, so I only had to cut straight across. I then took that entire panel and cut it in half length or widthwise. So that created my skirt front and skirt back. 
And then I took the one of those panels and shortened it to the not the shortest width or uh, height, but like somewhere in between. It's hard to explain now. But basically I shortened that a little and so that way I could differentiate between the front skirt panel and the back skirt panel. I then folded each of the panels in half and lay them next to each other with the side seams touching and used pins to shape it. So I have obviously the back panel at the longest point was just already there and then just tapered it up a bit to the side seam about halfway towards where I wanted the shortest point on the front to be. And then from the front, I started at the short, shortest point and tapered it out so that it met the back at the side seam. And then cut it. Now on the front, over the left knee, I had planned a slit, which I cut as a tall, narrow triangle. And that was to accommodate the flounce that I was going to add later. So with all of the skirt shaping done, it was time to start assembling and attaching the skirt to the bodice. So the first thing I did was attach the pockets onto one side of the skirt and sew down that side seam. Now I only did that on one side because I planned this dress with a side zipper and a side pocket. And so that changes your construction method a little, especially when you have the zipper and the pocket both in the same seam. And I will actually have a video tutorial on how to do that coming out soon. But after that one side seam was sewn, I attached the pocket to the other seam, gathered the skirt, and attached it to the bodice. Once it was attached to the bodice, I then attached the zipper into that remaining side seam and sewed that seam closed. Once that was done, it was time to add the ruffle to the hem. So the first thing I actually had to do was level out my hem because when I cut it, I did not cut it quite right where the side seams match. So I had to even that out and then set about attaching the ruffle. So the ruffle was three inches tall and I cut two strips the entire width of my fabric and stitched those together. Because I attached it from selvage to selvage, that meant that those short ends were already finished. I didn't have to do anything with them, but I did have to hem the long end of the ruffle. I then gathered it and stitched it onto the hem of the skirt. After stitching it on, I serged it to finish the raw edges and I added bias tape over the serging on the back him because with it being a high-low skirt, if I had it, you would have been able to see very visible white stitches. After that, I did then stitch down the serging as well as the bias, almost like sewing a hem or top stitching because that just helps the ruffle to hang down and not try and flip back up. With all of that done, I moved on to the flounce and that piece is going over that slit. That's what the slit is cut there for, is to accommodate the addition of the flounce. So I took three strips of fabric, one three inches, one four inches, and one five inches, hem them on three sides, the two short ends and the long end, stacked them together, gathered them, and then attached them to that slit the same way the flounce was, or the ruffle was attached to the hem. So stitch it down, sew it, and then top stitch it. And then because the flounce refused to hang the way I wanted it to, I went back and hand tacked the edges of the flounce to the edge of the ruffle, as well as the middle of the flounce kind of to itself so that it would hang the way I wanted it to. And after that, it was done. I really like how this dress turned out as of the amount of time I've worn it so far. It definitely seems to be a good fit, certainly better than the last dress. And I also like the cross weave, which makes it look black and somewhat lighting and red and other lighting. 
I plan to make a pair of black leggings to wear under this for cooler weather. And overall, I am just very happy with how it turned out.